Good morning from Quimby and Bethsaida United Methodist Churches. We're coming to you today from Quimby where the service is already underway. I'm going to be speaking to you this morning on the topic of let go and let God. Let go and let God. And if that doesn't speak to you, I'll give you a second choice. Surrender all to God. Surrender all to God. There was a fellow on top of the roof of his second story home putting up a television antenna. It was large and tall and he was trying to attach the guide wires from the antenna to a section of the roof. And the wind was blowing, making it even more difficult. And suddenly he began to slip. And he slid down the roof until he caught himself on the little metal rain gutter that went around the eaves of the second floor of the house. In panic, he held on and he screamed up to heaven. He held on and he screamed up to heaven. Isn't there anybody up there who can help me? And a voice from heaven came back, I can help you. And he says, well, what shall I do? What shall I do? The voice says simply, let go, I'll catch you. Let go, I'll catch you. To which he said, is there anybody else up there? Who could help me? Isn't that the way we are sometimes? Isn't that the way we are sometimes? We don't really have faith to let go, do we? We believe in an almighty God, an awesome God, a God of, God of mercy and grace, a God who can do anything. And yet, there are those times in our life where we aren't willing to let go and let God. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Surrendering to Him. I'm going to look at three passages of Scripture. Won't get into any deep, deep theological studies on them, but the three that's going to speak to this subject this morning, and I want to share those with you. Uh, Webster says that surrender is to give up possession or to yield to another. Give up possession or to yield to another. And that's something that we really just don't normally like to do. Surrendering to awful lot of us means defeat, doesn't it? Just doesn't, doesn't sound right. And yet that's what God requires us to do. To give up control to somebody else. Give up control to him. First scripture I want to look at you'll find in the Gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter. Gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter, beginning with the 18th verse. And you'll be familiar with this passage of Scripture. It's about the rich, young ruler. But listen to the words. It says, a certain ruler asked him, asked Jesus. Now this is Jesus talking. A certain ruler asked Jesus, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That's a reasonable question, isn't it? What have I got to do to inherit eternal life? What's the formula? Give me something specific so I can be sure. And Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Jesus is trying to find out just who this man thinks he is. He's called him good, so Jesus says nobody's good but God alone. It's another way of saying, do you know who I am? And in verse 20, he says, you know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. Shall not give false testimony. And it goes on. To which this young man says, I've kept every one of these since I was a boy. I've kept every one of these since I was a boy. In other words, this is too simple. There's got to be a lot more. And in wanting a lot more, he was actually complicating it, wasn't he? He was actually complicating it. This is what Jesus replied, verse 22. 
So when Jesus heard this, he said this, you still lack one thing. Sell everything that you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures laid up in heaven. And then you follow me. Jesus knew from the very beginning what was going on in this young man's mind. He knew what was important to him. He knew what was important to him, just like he knows what's important to us. Now, you think we really got to give up everything we own to be saved? No, this message this morning is also about priorities. It's about priorities. Because this is what Jesus told him. Get rid of everything that has become more important to you than me. Give up everything that has become more important to you than Father God. How hard it is, he says, for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. How hard it is for the rich to become enter the kingdom of God. He said, indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Now, you really think Jesus is saying here that if you're rich, you can't get into heaven? Nope, he's talking about priorities again. He's talking about what's important to you. The problem with this young man here is he was wealthy and that was the most important thing to him. That was the most important thing to him. What's the most important thing to you and to me today? That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. What's the most important? Are we really willing to surrender everything over to God's control and put him first? Put him first. Some that said, who then can be saved? And Jesus replied, what is impossible with man is possible with God. So, you know, you look at that and you say, well, it says a rich man can't be saved. And then it gives some real tough criteria there. But the very next verse says, with God, all things are possible. If you'll just do it his way and put God first and accept Jesus as your Savior, there's nobody that cannot be saved. Nobody. Nobody. Just got to surrender all. It can't be earned, can it? It can't be. In Ephesians, you remember that scripture? It's by grace you have been saved through faith, not by works. So we can't earn it. We don't deserve it. It's a gift from, from God. It's a gift from the Lord Jesus Christ who came and died so that we might be saved. Peter said this, we have left all that we had to follow you. <clears throat> In other words, we've, we've surrendered everything to follow you. And then in the next verse, you get the reply to this, verse 29. Jesus says, truly I tell you, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come. Jesus is saying, when you surrender all to me, you cannot imagine what's going to be done for you. And not just now, but now and in the age to come. Another way to look at that, not just the age to come, but starting now. See, once we're saved, that eternity with him starts at that moment. It starts at that moment. So Jesus says, you know, many times as much in this age and in the age to come, the eternal life. <clears throat> now I want to look very briefly at the Gospel of Luke, 21st chapter. Another very familiar passage of Scripture. The 21st chapter, Gospel of Luke, beginning with the first verse. Here, page is turning. That's good. As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts in the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty. She put in all that she had to live on. 
She surrendered, she surrendered all. She surrendered all. Put God first. That's one of the biggest problems people have is putting God first. And in one of the main areas that happens then is in the finances. What's the minimum that the Bible asks us to give to the church? A tenth. Ten percent. Ten percent. I, 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 I'm sure Robin, our treasurer, probably dreams about that at night. But does that say that's all we're supposed to give? <coughs> does it? That's the minimum. But if you're really surrendering everything to him, it's a matter of conscience from that time on. It's a matter of priority, you know. What does the Lord say that you need to give? What's the right amount for you? And nobody else can tell you that. Nobody else should try to tell you that. But that's something you know you need to decide. But it's another sign of who is surrendering, you know, to him and giving, giving all. Sacrificial giving is what he expects for us to do. And uh, a lot of people struggle with that. So uh, I want to look at more, one more scripture here. Again, the Gospel of Luke, the 14th chapter, beginning with verse 25. 14th verse, 14th chapter, verse 25. And this one, if you had a title to put on this, would be the cost of being a disciple. <clears throat> Large crowds were, tra were traveling with Jesus. And turning to them, he said this, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Now, you know, if you're reading that, <clears throat> you need to pause there and say, now, God explained that to me because you're a God of love and you tell us to love each other and love everybody. So surely you, you can't mean this. Again, it's, he's just saying you can't love them more than you love me. He's saying, I've got to come first. You got to love me first. And then certainly you need to love all these other people. Uh, verse 27 says, And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Jesus was crucified. You remember what they made him do? After his trial, did he not have to carry his cross as long as he could? See, to the Romans, that was another way of showing his humility and their control. Total submission is what they wanted. So when they made uh, Jesus or anybody else carry their cross, it was supposed to represent total submission to the Roman authority. And so Jesus says, whoever does not carry their cross and follow me, Jesus wants us to surrender to him completely. Total submission to him. He says that if you're not willing to submit to me totally, then you can't be my disciple. So, However you have to do that, again, that's between you and him and the Holy Spirit. You know, the things that he is calling on you to do and whether or not you're going to step out and do those things. Whether or not you're going to step out and do those things. And then he goes on and he talks about, suppose one of you wants to build a tower and you need to first sit down and estimate the cost. And he says, you know, and we would do that. You figure out the cost, you know, be sure you can pay for it before you proceed. And then he gives another example of a king who's going to war and he looks at the strength of his enemy and he looks at his own army and he measures the cost before going in and decides what he needs to do. But when you get to verse 33, Jesus sums it all up when he says, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything that you have cannot be my disciple. Now, don't take any of this out of context here today. I'm not expecting any of you to go in any of your checking accounts and call Robin this afternoon and tell her to come by and pick it up. Not suggesting you go home and sell all, you, all that you have. All I'm saying to you is the same thing God says to me is he's got to come first. And we have the right relationship with him. We study the word, we're spending time praying, seeking his guidance, the Holy Spirit will let us know what that is for each of us. And as I said before, nobody else has the right to tell anybody else what God wants them to do. 
But that's something that we need to know for ourselves within here and submit to him because he says, I'm a jealous God. I'm not going to have any other gods before me. So what a lot of people are doing is they're putting other gods, may not be little idols sitting on the shelf, but little idols before God because other things have become more important than what he, he wants us to do. There's a song that we sing a lot and we use it a lot as a altar call song. I've mentioned it over the last couple of weeks, but I wanted to look at it today. It's I Surrender All. I Surrender All. Now, I'm not going to sing it. I'm not going to ask you to sing it, but I want to run through a few words here. Because it's a powerful song that goes along with what the Bible says. It says, All to Jesus I Surrender. In other words, I'm willing to let go and let God, even if I'm hanging from a roof, you know. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. You know, whatever he wants us to do with us, our finances, our time. A lot of people are more willing to give of their finances than they are of their time, really are. Whatever it is he wants you to give, he, the song says, I belong to you, I'm surrendering you, so I will freely give that. And I will forever love and trust him. I'll love him always. And in his presence, daily live. In other words, I'm going to have a daily relationship with him. And I'm going to seek to be, you know, close as I can to him each and every day. Second verse says, I surrender all. I surrender humbly. And at his feet I bow. Need to get self out of the way, don't we? Get self out of the way. Uh, sometimes the biggest thing we have for God is our own self. <clears throat> our own priorities are more important than what his priorities are. So the song says, you know, I'm going to be humble. I'm going to realize that he's God and I'm going to bow before him. And then worldly pleasures all forsaken. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Is there any sin in going out and just having a good time and enjoying your friends? Depends on how you do it, where you're going, doesn't it? But, you know, uh, God wants us to fellowship. He wants us to have good lives. He wants us to build relationships. But they can't come before him. Worldly pleasures, you know, those things can't be come before God and his church. A lot of people enjoy worldly pleasures somewhere this morning instead of being in church. And that does not please God. Where, where are your priorities, you know? Uh, a lot of people are willing to give up the party life. They believe that there's a God. They believe that they need to have a relationship with him someday. But right now, partying is more important than that. And you understand, I'm just trying to have a good time. So worldly pleasures. And uh, those same people will spend countless amounts of money on these worldly pleasures and not want to give anything to help the church. Robin, you probably like this sermon today, don't you? I do. <laughs> For those watching on YouTube, she's my treasurer. And this is really not a, a sermon about, about tithing. It's a sermon about priorities, what God would have us do. And it goes on, says, take me, Jesus, take me now. Third verse says, I surrender all. Make me Savior, holy thine. That word in that song is important. Holy thine, all yours. Everything about me, yours. You know, me, my family, my resources. It's all about you. Let me feel the Holy Spirit, it says. Truly know that thou art mine. Fourth verse, uh, I surrender all. Lord, I give myself to thee. That's the most important thing. To give yourself to him. That's his desire, that we give ourselves to him. And it was made possible through the Son, Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on that cross, his blood cleansed us, so we have something to give to God. Give him ourself, everything about ourself. And then it ends with, Now I feel the sacred flame, oh, the joy of full salvation. Glory, glory to his name. I surrender all question at this point for you and me is can we sing that song just like it's written without modifying it at all and do it 
and still be completely truthful. So everything in that song when we sing it, I surrender all, is it 100% the truth? And that's a question everybody has to answer for themselves. The question is, that follows in, are, are you like the widow or are you like the rich young ruler? Are you like the widow or the rich young ruler? Have you made the sacrifices required of disciples? Simply putting God first. Or your priorities in order? Can the world see Jesus in you and through you? Can they see Jesus in you and through you? When our priorities in order, they can. And they will. And then we need to remember, we talked about this very briefly at midweek prayer meeting, that uh, we are the church and as such, we are his ambassadors. We're his, his ambassadors. People look at us and we represent Jesus, we represent God, we represent the United Methodist denomination, we represent Quimby United Methodist Church as his ambassadors. So can we let go and let God? And you, fit, you, you, you complete that statement. Can we let go and let God control my time? Can we let go and let God control where I go? Can we let go and let God control how I speak, how I treat other people? You know, can we let go and put God first? Let's be sure that we can say as the song said, All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> in just a minute, we're going to have an altar call here in the church. But for those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook, just want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, as I usually do, I would encourage you to be in church someplace if you have a church. And if you don't, we would invite you to come and join us here at Quimby or, or Bethsaida. We would make you feel at home. And uh, the main thing, though, is to put God first. Please remember that when you are here, that Lou and I love you. We miss you. We pray for you all the time. And go out and make it a, a great life by following Jesus and all that you do. May God bless you.